Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship today. It's good to see everyone here and to gather in God's house and to receive from him all that he wants to give us today. Um, let's see, I feel like there was some announcements, but uh, they just flitted away. So that's good that we have screens and uh, bulletins to remind us of everything that's going on. So, uh, but why don't we stand up and greet those folks around us as we prepare for worship this morning? Good morning, Lord. Good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Remember to fill out your uh, um, connecting point uh, connection point card, please, so we can uh, keep track of everyone here. And um, yeah, I think that'll do it. We're oh, so this month, just a reminder, uh, kind of in a, uh, along our lines of our sermon series, we're going to be singing um, a bunch of uh, um, catechism hymns. And so uh, we're going to start off by singing uh, our opening song, which is "These Are the Holy Ten Commands." absolution. We begin our service now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? What would you do with Since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise and the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and to one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, to me a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us to your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us of our sins, grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, by your grace, hear the prayers of your church. Grant that those things which we ask in faith we may receive through your bountiful mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading is from Habakkuk chapter 1. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits at its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it, it will surely come. It will not delay, behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief steal, no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as it is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Lord, you, Lord. And he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea, that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day, and turns to you seven times, saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him, when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, and dress properly, and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank the servant because he did what he commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next song. Another. 
you know, one thing I was thinking about with this, with this, this Lord's Prayer, um, and and kind of in conjunction with our epistle lesson, and even a little bit with our um, with our gospel lesson, um, but you know, both of these, the gospel and the epistle, are really focusing us on, of course, on our relationship with one another, and of course, whether or not we forgive people, uh, though God wants us to forgive people. Uh, even if we think that they don't deserve being forgiven. So, but let's open up. If, we, if you want to follow along your pew Bible, we're in Ephesians chapter 4, um, um, beginning of verse 25. That's page 829 in your pew Bible, if you like to follow along, 829. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 uh, is what we're looking at here. Uh, but let's kind of look here just to, again, kind of beginning uh, part of this, this of, of, our, of our text for today We're in the, the last part of the uh, sermon or the last Lord's Prayer. Sorry, give us this day our daily bread. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But he does. Uh, but we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. I, you know, when I was looking over this and kind of putting this together, I was reminded of, of uh, um, when I would teach confirmation class and we would talk about the fourth, uh, this, this petition in the Lord's Prayer. And we would, we would talk about, you know, because the kids would kind of, you know, they're like, well, what's, what does this mean? You know, not, not, not from the catechism, but they didn't, it's, didn't quite get it. And I would say, okay, think about your breakfast, okay? Pop-Tarts, that was a big deal. I don't know if you guys like Pop-Tarts. These kids love Pop-Tarts and dry cereal with milk, okay? And uh, I would say, so, so where did you get the Pop-Tarts and the milk and the cereal? And they say, well, you know, uh, my mom or dad went to the store. Okay. And I said, well, where did, uh, um, how were they able to buy that, you know, at the store? So, well, they got a job. You know, they have a job and they got paid. Okay. And then I said, so where did, uh, um, where did the store get those things? And, you know, they're like, well, one guy was like, well, they just probably went over to this dairy farm and milked those cows and stuck it in jugs right then. And, well, it's not that fast and quick because it had to go through the processing plant, but they knew where milk came from, so that was good. Anyway, so we're just kind of trying to go back of, you know, all these steps of what we have for our, our morning, you know, morning breakfast. And, uh, and I thought, you know, this is good because then they, you know, then they were kind of starting to see that, you know, this is how God provides for all of our needs, okay? He, uh, he gives uh, the parents, you know, the capability of doing work and, uh, and then the employers who will pay them. And then they can use that money, of course, to go buy food. And then, you know, it's a whole process. And then they have you know, Pop-Tarts and milk and cereal for their breakfast. And uh, so, I, you know, I thought, okay, this is a good example. I've just shared that with you because to me, sometimes I think the examples we have of uh, or what we, we're encountering on a day-to-day -day basis can seem a little much or maybe we're not sure of, of, of what daily bread is or where we get it or how. Well, you know, God works through all of this whole, whole world that he created, he, this whole setup that he has given us. Because, you know, God, because, well, because he cares for us, because he loves us. He wants us to have these things. He knows that we need food and drink every day in order to, to uh, nourish our bodies and to, to care for us. Of course, you know, one thing nice about Luther's catechism is he, you know, he kind of explains a little further that it's, it's, it's not just the food that we have for breakfast, the Pop-Tarts and the cereal and the milk or coffee and donuts or whatever it is you're enjoying. But it also includes a uh, um, devout spouse, a devout husband or wife, devout children, workers, faithful rulers, a good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. This, this, is, why we, uh, um, this is why we pray for our, our, our federal and state and local leaders. This is why we pray for our church leaders. You know, even if you don't agree with the federal, state, and local leaders, you, God tells us we're to pray for them, okay? Because he's given them to us for a time right now. And, uh, and, 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 and these are part of our daily bread of things that he gives us. You know, it was kind of a, a cool morning this morning coming here. And, and, uh, and you know, I forgot my jacket, which I hadn't, but it was, it was beautiful. And I thought, this is great. He provided a vehicle for most everybody to drive here and uh, to get to church, 
and to, you know, to come and you had gasoline in your car, obviously. You probably didn't, uh, you know, pedal your car here. Um, but, but, you know, he provides for all of these needs. And one of the things that I, I've, you know, tried to encourage, not just here, but when I was in Iowa, that the importance of just thanking God for all of the things that he gives us on a daily basis, no matter what it is. You know, sometimes we can not think about, well, the car ran, and so I got to church. And, well, you could thank God that, you know, your car ran. Thank God that there was gasoline in your car, no matter what the price is. And that, uh, uh, you know, you were able to drive it, and you were able to get here. And thank God that you were able to walk into the sanctuary and uh, uh, um, greet people and shake hands and visit with folks. And all, all these reasons are, are things that God provides for us, for our needs of body and soul. So God then, of course, uh, uh, in, in, uh, on into the fifth petition, uh, he teaches us, be, uh, uh, um, lead, let's say, I, uh, let, me, let me back up here. So um, uh, let's see. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Here we see this, uh, of course, in our epistle lesson, but also we see it uh, in, our, uh, in our gospel lesson. But let me, let me read this uh, section here from Ephesians chapter 4, just a little bit here. Ephesians 4.25. Um, there's a lot of discussion in this short section about, you know, how we are to relate to one another. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but work must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may be beneficial to those who listen. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ in God, in Christ, God forgave you. You know, the thing that I, I, uh, I, I feel like I've heard a lot of people, not really since here because I'm still fairly new, but just this, this whole idea of forgiving people. I'm, you know, God in, in, invites us, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For, help us to forgive those who've sinned against us. And, you know, it's unfortunate when maybe we, we, we pray to God for something but we still are harboring anger and bitterness in our heart towards somebody else. And, you know, God clearly tells us here in our epistle lesson and even in our, our, uh, uh, even in our gospel lesson the importance of forgiving one another. Because, you know, ultimately I think, why do you assume that God should forgive you if you're unwilling to forgive somebody else? I mean, it's not easy but by the work of the Holy Spirit in you, by, by Christ reminding you of his holy word of how if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To remind us what Jesus has done for us. He, he died for you and for me to give you and me new life. And so therefore, we should want to forgive those. And, and if you struggle to forgive, then you pray, God, help me to forgive. It's Not easy, but you just keep praying it, okay? And, and then the, the next petition, of course, rolls right into that. Lead us not into temptation. Well, God pray we, God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the, the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief and despair. Another great shame and vice, although we are attacked by these things, we pray we, my, we may finally overcome them and win the victory. You know, God, God we, we pray that we're not tempted. It, well, there's, tempt, there's nothing wrong with temptation, Okay, because we're tempted all the time. Uh, one of the books that uh, uh, my daughter has at home, and it it's, it goes through the Lord's Prayer, and there's a picture, and I think it's a really it's a really cute picture of this little girl, and she's standing at this buffet table, and on one side are cakes and cookies, and on the other side is cut vegetables and fruit, and you can see that she is really interested not in the carrots. Okay, she really is interested on the other side. Okay, and I thought that's a wonderful, wonderful picture, okay, because it's a perfect situation of us being tempted. There's nothing wrong with cakes and donuts and all that stuff, okay, nothing wrong with that, okay, but 
as as the, as the little book is just explaining it, which we just see here in in our in our text in the scriptures, the importance of 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 you know doing what God really wants us to do. Okay, choose the right thing is is ultimately what the that book is telling us. So again, there's nothing wrong with I I, I feel like years I struggled with that, and I saw that even with Luther, where he you know he struggled with temptations. You know, and finally, he understood from scriptures and from what God has done in his life that temptations are not bad because we are tempted all the time, every day, every day, no matter what, for a variety of things, good and bad, probably bad. But, uh, okay, it's, it's when you pursue that temptation, that's when it becomes a sin, and that's when we pray for God to lead us not into temptation. God, help me to flee from that temptation. Help me to, to, to turn away from that. We see that in Corinthians, a number of places where Paul talks about the importance of turning away from the temptation that is leading me to sin. Whatever that might be and however that might be. You know, it's... it's I was reading something of, of history that was about, you know, about 200 years ago. And, and, you know, and I'm like, well, the Internet, of course, didn't exist 200 years ago, not even 100 years ago. And, uh, um, and you know, and, and uh, because of the Internet, the Im immense amount of stuff is available. I mean, it's wonderful because you can find out what the weather is in, in Ghana and West Africa, if you're cared to know, on a Sunday morning and... In, in Illinois, or, uh, you know, or you can find out about some football, British football team, how they scored, or what's going on in China, or in Australia, or wherever, and all that's wonderful. But of course, you know, sinful man has, has graciously figured out how to cause the internet to be a temptation to all of us, okay? And whether, and pornography is a, is a, is a horrible sin that is, leads a lot of people down a path that they shouldn't go but also the, uh, the anonymity that leads people to, 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 to steal. I mean, there's two big things and online gambling. And I mean, the amount of, of junk that's out there is amazing. And, and uh, we'll leave that for another topic. And, and so there's God, you know, provides for all of these things of our needs of body and soul. And, and you know what? Internet is great because I know there's a lot of people that in Iowa, I saw this a lot. Okay, there would be some older folks in the church. We're talking like 80 plus, okay? And they would uh, say, oh, I don't know how to do the internet, okay? And then they, you know, whip out their, their smartphone. Whip out their smartphone. Let me show you my grandkids' pictures in, uh, in Missouri and in California. And, uh, wait a second. You said you know how to do the internet. And, uh, okay, maybe they just know how to do that. But still, okay, they know how to do they, You can see your grandkids' pictures in, you know, wherever they are. And, and, you know, and whatever it is, I, it's wonderful. You know, we can do online, we can do videos and, and you know, phone calls and, and everything. And it's, and it's great. But sometimes, you know, it can also lead us into a path that we, we shouldn't be going. That's why we pray for God to help me to, to flee when the temptation is too much so that I will turn the other way. And that's where memorizing scripture really comes into play. It's, you know, because when you're, you're, you're tempted to go down a path and, and uh, uh, look at whatever online or, or access stuff online or even say and do things in person that you shouldn't be doing, that's when the Spirit can remind you of, of, of the words of, of the promises of Jesus. Flee from sexual temptations, to flee from sexual immorality, to flee from the temptation to lie and to cheat and to gossip. Flee from these things and run the other way. I mean, the Greek, the biblical Greek in those senses, is, is an, it's an urgency of, of turning away from that temptation that will cause you to sin. Now, of course, God knows that that's exactly the, the world we live in because we no longer live in a perfect world. We no longer live in the Garden of Eden. But this is why we have the word of God. This is why we have the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus sends us the Holy Spirit so that we will know what to do in those times when we are tempted to not forgive our neighbor when we should or to, uh, uh, to, to do something and walk down a path that we shouldn't be doing. 
Not that I'm speaking of being in need, Paul writes to the Philippians, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you're able to do all things through Christ who strengthens you because the Spirit works in you to strengthen you, remind you of what God's Word says, whether it's the Ten Commandments or maybe a reminding you of the Apostles' Creed or maybe reminding you to pray, pray the Lord's Prayer like we've been studying the last two Sundays. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I, I, one thing I love about uh, gift shops and what, wherever they're, you know, like where there's Bible verses. And I think those are great. I really like them. Okay, that's not an invitation to give me a whole bunch of that stuff. Okay, I already have plenty. So as the pastor, don't, don't buy that stuff for me. Okay, I have plenty. But I think it's great because those things can remind you, you know, I've seen like the ones we have in our fellowship hall, you know, scripture passages that are very clear and to the point and they remind us of what God tells us about go and make disciples or that you're with us always until the end of the age that I can do all things through Jesus who strengthens me. Now, sometimes in that strengthening, it can be a little bit of, you know, there can be a little bit of discipline along the way. You know, it, and, that, and that's, that's how it works. I was having this conversation with someone the other day that, you know, sometimes we, we, discipline will happen to us. God will allow a discipline to happen to us in our lives, some unfortunate situation to happen in your life because he is, is, is protecting you and helping you through this process. Maybe he's protecting you for something worse that could have, that, that could have happened to you. You know, maybe you, maybe you broke a leg. Well, and, you, and that's awful, okay? A broken, I've had a broken arm before, and it's terrible, okay? But I think God, could, God spared me from something worse happening to my body than just a broken arm, so, you know, and, and, and it's not easy when you're in a situation to say, well, you know, I'm struggling with this health or I'm, I'm really having a hard time here and this is really awful. And you know what? It probably is. I'm not going to discount that at all. But those times are not times where we just throw our hands in the air and, and act like uh, people who don't believe in Jesus. You know, Peter tells us that we should, we should have the hope we should live and be prepared to have the hope uh, or prepared to give a defense for the hope that we have in Jesus. That hope that in spite of being in a difficult situation, in spite of, you know, praying, God, help me to be, you know, not be tempted. And maybe I am still tempted. That God will forgive you of your mercy, of your, forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. To be strengthened by his word because... We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That might not be an easy walk, you know, or walk in a rose, rose garden. I remember telling this, uh, having this discussion a number of times in Iowa where, you know, God may allow you to walk through a rose garden, but if you, if you rub your hands, drag your hands along rose bushes, what's going to happen? You're going to get some pokes. They're beautiful to look at and they're beautiful to smell, but... You know, I think the rose bush is a beautiful example that it's beautiful, but we also, it's not perfect because it'll poke you, okay? But that's okay because we can still enjoy, we don't just, you know, the city of Des Plaines didn't go hack down all the rose bushes in its, in its city limits because there's, you know, thorns on rose bushes, did it? We still have beautiful rose bushes all around the city, for the moment, all discipline may seem painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So even though bad things will happen, again, it, 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 it's a force for God's will and purpose to happen, okay? Maybe he's protecting you from something worse. Maybe he's, maybe he's allowing you to break your arm because he wants you to stop doing something that you've been habitually doing that is causing you to sin, Maybe God's just trying to, if you will, I've heard someone say once, a Christian say once, you know, getting my attention. I've been, you know, going and going and going and not paying attention to God. And then, you know, it allowed me to break my arm or my leg or so that I would, I would have to stop and stop and, and, uh, and, and seek the Lord my God and to be reminded that Jesus wants me to come to him day in and day out. 
And in those moments when we're maybe, you know, maybe you, you're having to you be forced to stop because of a, you know, you're an illness or, you know, a broken bone or, or any other thing going on, I, you know, of course, pray. It's okay to tell God that you're unhappy, okay? God can handle anything you throw at him, okay? Don't worry about that. Just, okay, but don't spend your entire time griping about it, okay? Or whining and crying out like I've, I've done, okay? I will admit. But, but, but pray, God, help me. Help me to praise you through this time. Help me to praise you to seek your face in spite of, you know, whatever difficult situation I'm in or the temptation I've been, you know, been struggling with. And, uh, and the, the closing to the, the Lord's Prayer, I think, is a, is a, is a great prayer to, <clears throat> to get our focus back on Christ. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself. The kingdom of God is, will come when God wants it to come. He, he, he brings it to us. And God is, has all power and all authority over all the earth. Jesus tells us that to his disciples uh, at the end of the Gospels. And all glory belongs to God. I, you know, I often pray, uh, I try to before our worship services with our organists and our tech people and, and, uh, and, I, you know, and even my own personal devotion time. Because I, I, I pray that, that God will be glorified in what we do in worship and that and all of us here and all those watching will be edified, that is built up in their faith. Because that's ultimately what worship is about. It's about giving God glory for who he is and what he's done for us, praising and thanking him, and then, and then building one another up by the work of the Holy Spirit, strengthening us through a Bible study, through personal Bible reading and study, and, and through other means. So that we can, so that, because this is what worship is all about. It's about receiving from God all that he wants to, to give you. I, you hear me say that, you know, most every Sunday beginning of worship service. Because it is. Jesus gives us his body and blood and holy communion. It's not just something I picked up this morning. I thought, well, hey, let's have a snack after sermon time. And uh, no, it's, it's, the, it's the body and blood. Jesus gives that to you. He gives you this word. He allowed me to come and bring this message, which I pray will will uh, glorify God and, and build one of you, you know, each one of you up. He gave us, you know, these readings. He gave us these songs also to help, to help build us up and to praise God. You know, it's also for us to learn and grow. I mean, that's kind of why the, the, the catechism hymns or, or uh, you know, Luther created those uh, or kind of pulled those out, uh, you know, centuries ago. So we can, we can learn, be reminded of the truth of God's word through music, through preaching, through the readings, through all these things. So that all of this, we'll, we, we can thank and praise and serve and obey our God for all that he has done for us. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found in the one true faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please arise as we confess our faith now in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, Begotten, not made, being the one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in their conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again from the dead, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, and then will come again in glory to judge all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism with the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and 
Uh, please be seated and let us uh, let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, remember our pastors whom you have called to a holy calling, embolden them in their testimony concerning our Lord Jesus, and strengthen them by your power to courageously suffer for the gospel and guard the good deposit entrusted to them. We therefore pray for Pastor Matt Harrison, our LCMS president, Pastor Alan Buss, our Northern Illinois district president, Pastor Carl Fay, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in our area. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our local church leaders, uh, including the board of managers. Continue to encourage them to seek your face uh, in every problem and situation that they have, that they'll be reminded that you have our congregation in the palms of your hands. Lord, in your mercy, send your spirit, Lord, into our hearts, souls, and minds so that we will desire to learn more about you each day by reading or listening to your holy word. Lord, in your mercy, today you offer us your body and blood and holy communion. Encourage each one of us so that we will confess our sins and receive from you all that you want to give us. Remind us that you give us of your body and blood and holy communion to strengthen our faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, uh, Timothy learned of Christ from his faithful grandmother, Lois, and his faithful mother, Eunice. Bless all faithful parents and grandparents that they might bear witness to Christ to their children and grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy, in your preserve us, dear Lord, from a paralyzed law and just perverted justice. Uh, strengthen those whom you have placed in authority to govern wisely, that we might live free of strife and contention. We therefore pray for President Biden, Vice President Harris, uh, Illinois Governor Pritzker, and Des Plaines Mayor Goskowski. Lord, in, in your mercy, we pray for those uh, serving our city in the various services, <clears throat> including the police, the fire department, the uh, ambulance service, and all first responders. Grant these men and women the strength and stamina they need as they have uh, serve you where they, we have called them each day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, receive our thanks that you preserve your word in this world of uncertainty, confusion, and lies. Grant us to love your law and rejoice in your promises continually that we may live in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for us, those struggling with their health uh, and well-being, um, including Ken Markworth, uh, Walter Krauss, Marlene Johnson, Kathleen Prophet, Jared Bunce, uh, Marion Wegner, uh, Renee Davison, Liliana O'Donnell, uh, Jack Shannon, Phil and Susan Schimke, uh, Carol Ludlow, and uh, Werner Haberstock. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would continue to heal those folks and strengthen them according to your will and in your time. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we pray for the folks in Florida and, uh, and in Cuba that are struggling, Lord, um, following the Hurricane Ian. I pray that you would continue to uh, strengthen them uh, in their faith, Lord. Remind them, Lord, of your peace and help them, Lord, uh, as they move through these cleanup days uh, following uh, uh, this uh, major destruction that hurricane caused. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also pray and thank you for uh, birthdays today for Kitty Kuntz, uh, Jerry uh, Lukey, uh, Deb Swanson, uh, Bob Desiren, uh, uh, Richard Lump, and uh, pray that you and thank you, Lord, for another year of life you've granted to them. We also pray uh, for an anniversary of Tammy and Chuck uh, Acevedo, I pray and thank you, Lord, for their many years of marriage. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Um, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll continue now with the service of the sacrament. The Bible teaches us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and 1 Corinthians that Jesus gives us of his body and his blood in Holy Communion. Jesus gives us of his body and blood in Holy Communion in order to strengthen our faith in him and to nurture our relationship with our fellow believers in Christ. First, looking at this simple bread and wine, you might wonder how these simple elements can strengthen your faith. Luther's Catechism explains it this way, how can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sin. 
When we receive forgiveness of our sins in Holy Communion, it is this forgiveness of sins that unite us as fellow believers in the body and blood of Jesus. Holy Communion is a fellowship meal. It's an opportunity that, uh, for us to, to not only grow in our own faith, but also in this fellowship meal, it's an opportunity for us to grow as a congregation and to grow together in Christ. Because Holy Communion is a...